mentor and trainer here with, what's your name? Michael Iguaga. Michael, good to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Give us a little talk about what you've done because I heard your story and it was inspirational. Yeah, so um, I just graduated college. I, I played at the University of Texas, San Antonio. Cool. And um, I had a really good chance to go to the NFL. Um, got, got the opportunity. I was trading in Dallas at the Michael Johnson Performance Center. Okay. Um, Biggest time of the year is the NFL Pro Day, where you know we had about 28 of NFL scouts all came down and scouted us out. I had a really good pro day. Yeah. Um, trained in Dallas for about three months, isolation, sort of just like trading. Yeah. You, know, you isolate yourself and then you just you you uh, sort of like hibernating. Yeah, of course. And, um, so I go out there, have a really good showing. San Francisco 49ers said they're going to pick me up in the draft. Call me in the fifth round. Um, I threw an event at the Austonia in Austin, Texas. Beautiful building, reserved it, family, friends, everyone's there. Um, when the San Francisco 49ers call, everyone is recording me, they're posting it on Snapchat, they're, you know, oh, he's a 49er, blah, blah, blah. Lo and behold, they end up going with another guy from Florida or something like that. So they told you the day before? No, the day of. The day of, they're like, we're gonna call you in the fifth round, be ready. Yeah, 100%. And so you got all excited and you got everyone together. Yeah. And then they didn't call you. Didn't call. What about like the sixth round or the seventh round? Exactly, right? Nothing. Nothing. They end up going, they end up going a different direction. And then we get a call from one of the uh, personnel coaches at the after the draft's over, because how it works is if you don't get picked up during the draft, yeah. after the draft, you know, they won't assign you to a uh, a free agency contract. Yeah. yeah. So the guy calls, and me and my agent are sitting there like, all right, we're gonna, you know, we'll sign a free agency, that's all right, it's yeah. the perfect fit for you, the position you play. Yeah. Um, says that they're gonna sign me to a free agency. I get off the phone with him, he's like, okay, I'm gonna call your agent now. Yeah. Calls my agent, and the agent is like, uh, he said that something happened, they have to hold off for a bit. Yeah. And we're just sitting there with our hands, like we're sitting on our hands now, just sitting there, everybody's already recorded everything, everything's out on social media, and I'm just sitting there like, I'm praying at this point. How moment. long ago was this? This was this was last year. Okay. This was two months before I found your course. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. Long story short, San Francisco doesn't sign me to a free agency. They don't draft me in the uh, NFL draft. Yeah. It wasn't until the next day the Chicago Bears call my agent and they're like, hey, this Michael kid, bring him up to rookie camp with us. Yeah. I go to rookie camp, I have an outstanding showing. Um, lo and behold, Chicago doesn't pull the trigger either. So I am a NFL free agent. At this point, I felt like I've just, I've let so many people down. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. Ironically enough, Tim, I kid you not, I'm, I'm searching, I'm surfing through social media. Yeah. And I see, I think I actually have it saved, my phone is over there, but I see the picture that you posted, it was of your red Ferrari yes. and of your blue Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there and I was just like, you know, of course it's enticing in the beginning. Yeah. And you, you see it and I'm like, who is this guy? What's he about? What's he about? <laughs> and then I start to look your stuff up and I was like, this is very interesting. Because um, I, I dabbled a bit in the foreign exchange market. Gotcha. So anyways, I start studying your, you know, your programs and everything like that. Yeah. Two months later, I scrounge the money up, and then I'm in your course. Awesome. And I've just been studying it for the past six, seven months. Yeah. I finally went live in December. Cool. So no NFL. No NFL. That's like heartbreaking, man. That story, like, what the fuck? Man, dude, you're telling me it was the most hopeless feeling of my entire life. Do they apologize for telling you one thing and then like? Oh, it's the most cutthroat business you'll ever yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. Besides that. finance, of yeah. course, but I mean. But they told you that morning? Yeah. The day of the NFL draft, they told, they told me, yeah, we're gonna pick you up, blah, blah, blah. After the draft, even, like even that, I was like, okay, you know, they went a different direction, that's understandable. After the draft, they're like, we're, we'll at least sign you to a free agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, free, no free agency. What about CFL? What about European leagues? Check this out. That's funny, right? Canada Football League came and they offered me. Yeah. I turned it down. What? To trade in your city. Oh your my place. God. <laughs> now you better be successful. Yeah. Oh. But, yeah. But that's how dedicated I am, though. I mean, every second of the day, I'd, I'd rather, 
And I think you got to think about the type of lifestyle you want to live. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? And to me, it's like... You tell the truth. Yeah. It's I like, know. I saw that movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for real. It's, uh, but I'd rather have the lifestyle of, uh, of you know, it's, it's employing yourself. So how's it been going so far? It's been going really good. It's been going good. I've been learning a lot. I'm down, you know, from December. Yeah. But How much are you down? I'm down 4,000. But it's my, you know, it's my first couple months. It's manageable. Are you um, cutting losses small? I am cutting losses small. My problem is over trading. You I, see that in our little room. So we have another room right over there. You see, there's a whole bunch of over traders. Yeah. That's the number one problem with newbies. Are you under the pattern day trader rule? Um, no. Get under the PDT rule. That will force you to not trade that much. I used to hate the PDT rule. Do you know the PDT rule is? Yeah, for sure. So you, the PDT rule, if your account is under 25000 you cannot make more than three day trades per week. You can hold the stock overnight, but three day trades per week. And that forces people with small accounts to not over trade. I used to hate it. I was like, this is America. We should be able to do whatever we want. Now I'm like, holy shit, like newbies over trade. See, my thing was, I was like, you know what? I'm disciplined, da da da. I've been playing football my entire life. You know, I'll yeah. just take it upon myself to not overtrade. Yeah. And I find myself, like I told you yesterday, I mean, I'll have like 20 tickets, so that's 10 different trades in the morning. And I'm just, you, Way look, you, too much. you look back and it's always like, I make one good trade, I'm up 700 bucks. Yeah. And then I trade down and I end up ending the morning with a like $150 loss. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> So this is why, like when you've seen several people, I'm like, you lock in the 600, that's it. You're good for a morning, for a day, for two days. Yeah. You might miss a play by thinking that way, but you protect your account, you protect your games. Yeah. I made $2,000 today on two trades, done. I don't need anything else. If something comes, I will take it, but I'm not looking for anything else. Right. You saw Ducks make $20,000 in one trade. He's done. That's crazy. It's like that blog post you wrote about being a sniper. Yes. That's exactly what it is. It's true, and <laughs> it's it's tough to do. So I'm glad that you're sharing your story. Thank you Definitely. for being so transparent. You know, 90% of traders lose, so don't feel that bad. And four thousand dollars, while it sucks, it's overcomable. Okay, like yeah, yeah. you can make that back with like five good trades or three good trades. Like if you wait, if you have the patience, or you can continue losing again and again and again and over trading. It's your choice, but. You need to really work on that. Overtrading kills. Yeah. What were your questions? So my first question. Don't overtrade. <laughs> my first question. The question is uh, for someone who's been trading live for four months. Yeah. What would be your best advice to me? So it's tough when you're first beginning. You want all the money. You want the blue Lambo. You want the red Ferrari. That's stuff that takes years to acquire. So I say this again and again. This is a marathon, not a sprint. So you have to have the right proper perspective. The first month, two months, three months, four months, six months, nine months, it doesn't matter how much money you make or lose. Like plus or minus, four, even if you were up 4,000 right now, like you would be a lot happier. You're like, yeah, I'm up 4,000. It doesn't fucking matter. Plus 4,000, negative 4,000, doesn't get you much in the real world. You need to learn the process. You need to learn the discipline now. So if you lose 4,000 and learn the process, that's a good 4,000. If you make 4,000 and you learn to just trade a whole bunch of random shit, right. that's bad lessons. The money that you make right now is insignificant to what you could make in the long run if you learn the right process. So my whole job, the first few months, is getting you onto that process. Rinse and repeat. You said you've had a few big wins. What's your biggest win? I made about $1,300 on, uh, I forgot the play, but I remember it was a 35% gain. Fantastic. And I end up over trading and turning it, giving it right back to the market. But I'm proud that you had that one opportunity where you know what it feels like, okay? So you have to replicate that kind of trade and replicate that process over and it might, next time might not be 1300, next time it might be 1100 or 900 or something. I mean, hopefully I can make you a little more conservative. Yeah. But once you have that, you lock it in, you're done for the day. Just so that you can feel like, okay, I made $1,000 today. $1,000 in a day is a damn good you know, starting point. Oh, yeah. So even if you make $500 in a day, you lock it in and you do that once, twice, maybe three times a week. See how that feels, because a lot of this is psychological, right? Mm -hmm. So the first few months, don't think about purely how much money you can make. How can you learn the process and stay disciplined? Tim Gratani, who's closing in on six million, made no money for the first nine months. 
No money. Forget about making his first million. No money for nine months. So you have money to live on, right? You're not relying on trading money. I highly encourage that. Yeah, yeah. Don't be like, oh, I gotta make money, I gotta pay rent. <laughs> this is a luxury, okay? And it's very speculative. 90% of traders lose. So you have to do what those other traders are not willing to do, which means studying, preparing, and learning the process, and not just thinking about money. Obviously, I don't want you down 4,000. I would prefer you up 4,000, but more important than that, I mean, I can just give you $4,000. I have it in my bag, but like, not there. It doesn't matter. <laughs> really. But it's, it's about what can you do today, tomorrow, this week, this month that will pay you bigger in six months, one year, two years, five years. Something that you learn this week, hopefully at this little you know, class, can make you enough money five years from now when your account is bigger. Because you need to learn how to make $500 in a day right now. And then five years from now, you take that same trade with a bigger position, and then $500 in a day might be $5,000 in a day. Does that make sense? No, 100%. Good. I really appreciate it. Yeah. How do I really change my perspective and um, focus on taking singles? I always hear you, talk, you know, telling yeah. Roland Wolf or somebody like that, it's all about taking singles and not trying to hit the home run. Yeah. How, how would I, you know, try to really change my mind frame in that sense? So, studying the past really helps. Uh, learning from my trades, you know, Tim Brittani sharing his trades, Mark Crook is sharing his trades. Mm -hmm. You can see what trades work, whether we make 10%, 20%, 30% on a trade. Um, those are all pretty much singles. 30% is closer to like a double or a triple. Okay. But learning to lock in profits and having the right perspective. Like too many people say, okay, I'm buying this stock, I think it can double. Whoa, calm down. The odds of you finding a stock that can double, very low. Sound like Twitter hype. You, yeah, you want to find high odds setups where you can make 10%, like singles, like Ichiro, right? Do you know Ichiro Suzuki, right? Baseball player, study him. He yeah. is the single leader in Major League Baseball and all baseball of all time. Okay. His one unique talent is hitting singles. And he hits them over and over and over and over again. He's like nearly 50 and he's still playing. He oh, wow. wants to hit more singles. I posted this video lesson three nights ago. I, no, I think no, I know you talked about it. I don't I, I never searched up the baseball player though. <laughs> I linked an ESPN article about Ichiro. This was Sunday night's lesson. I Hit singles, so you have to just try to lock it in. Again, what you're trying to do is to become a millionaire, right? Yeah. I want you to become a next millionaire student. In order to do that, you have to hit a lot of singles. You have to take a lot of $500 profits or $1,000 profits. It adds up to a million over time. So you can't be looking to make a double on your money. You can't be looking to make $3,000 on a trade. If you look at my average profit per trade, it's roughly 2,000. If you look at Michael Good, his average profit per trade is 900. If you look at Tim Gertani, his average profit per trade is like 1500 So all of us are millionaires, and yet we're only making $1,000, $1,500, $2,000 per trade. And if you have a smaller account, maybe you don't even try to make $2,000 in a trade. Maybe with a smaller account, you try to make $200 on a trade. And then scale up your position size later on. But small gains add up. And small gains are much more common and predictable and achievable than a big gain. Right. I can't remember the last time I had a stock that doubled. I mean, I've traded stocks that have doubled, but I've already taken my 20% profit. Right, yeah. Today, I actually nailed it pretty well. Today, I took a 30% profit. That's best case scenario. Yeah. Okay, appreciate that. Yesterday was like, what did I make? 30, 60 cents on a $2 stock. Um, well, I guess it was like a 15, 20% gain too. Wow, that's awesome. Higher. Yeah. Okay. So, last question is, you've owned a hedge fund. Yes. You've been on CNBC, Fox, CNN, Steve Harvey Show. Yeah. Um, and you've met with these billionaires and investors and everything. How have those experiences changed and shaped your perspectives on finance? Great question. Um, I would say that everyone has their specialty. You know, Steve Harvey, best interview I've ever had. He was even better than Larry King. And his specialty is being Steve Harvey. Like, this is a man who I met after decades of hard work refining his, you know, interview skills and his whole business. Larry King, you know, decades more. Um, CNBC, while I don't necessarily agree with the way that they talk about stocks, they don't let me talk about penny stocks, they didn't like when I brought female models on. I saw that. I did band. Um, but they have a business that makes roughly a million dollars a day in ads, and they cater to long-term investors. So they have their niche. So all of these people have a niche, 
and they might be different niches. So you have to find your own niche. You might have thought that football was your niche. I thought tennis was my niche. I had surgery on my arm. That's what got me into trading. My dad calls it the million dollar injury. So that, that NFL thing fucking sucks. It's heartbreaking, right? But you can use it and maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Maybe, you know, you can use that. I'm sure you have some anger and pain and bitterness. I mean, I was very bitter. I've always used bitterness to like drive me. I mean, the reason why I got injured is because I lost in the state finals in tennis and I was so fucking bitter. I was like, I'm not gonna lose next year. I was the junior in high school and I lost in the state finals. And then I was like, oh, I'm coming back stronger. And I, like, I'm like working out three hours a day. I'm like, you know, playing tennis for three hours a day. My weak Jewish body gave out. I can't take six hours a day. Like, come yeah, on, it's yeah. been thousands of years since we built the pyramids. We can't do that shit anymore. So it was a blessing in disguise, but I used everything that I felt to drive myself. And I found my niche first in stock trading. And then, you know, as a hedge fund manager, my hedge fund didn't do very well, right? I wasn't very good at it. I'm not good with trading huge accounts. I get too nervous. I'm really good at making a thousand or two thousand dollars per trade. And now I think I'm really good at teaching others how to make a thousand or two thousand dollars in a trade. Right. So you might not realize what your niche is right now. You might not have perfected it because you're at the beginning of your journey, but you will figure it out. You'll find what you enjoy, you'll find what you're best at, and then you go with that, and then you fucking push it. Right. That's the best. I think advice that I can give. There's a lot of billionaires that I know, not a lot, but a few. They're not happy, even though they're billionaires. Like if you ask 99.9% .9 of the world, like what is happiness? And they're gonna say money. And then there's a few people who are like, you know, religious or, you know, they work in charity or they're billionaires and money is not happiness. And you're like, what? You're a billionaire. You can do anything. You can buy anything. You have no worries. Being a billionaire brings on new concerns. They're basically prisoners of their money. Everyone knows that they have money. They can't trust anybody. They don't have real relationships. Right. They have all these responsibilities. So it's not just about how much money you can make. It's finding what makes you happiest. Being a millionaire is good enough for me. I just have a few million in the bank and I donate a few million more. I said this, I gave a TED talk and I was like, if I ever make a billion, I'll give it away. I don't want that prison. I'm fine with having just a few million in the bank. That's what suits me. So you have to find what suits you, what you're best at, what makes you happiest, and then rinse and repeat that process over and over again forever. Or it. as long as you can, you know? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 23. You have plenty of fucking time, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> some people come to me and they're like, I'm so lost. And they're like 20 or 20. <laughs> like, when were you ever fucking found? You haven't even lived yet. Yeah. Like, you haven't had a chance. So. You know, a lot of people are on this path, and you're, you seem to have a good head on your shoulders, so I'm actually glad that you saved yourself from the CTE phenomenon, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, so 100%. you're safe, and now you know what you have to do, and you just have to keep working, and you have to keep grinding. I like the studying. I don't like the overtrading. you got to clamp down on that. You know you have that problem. Yeah. So the first step is recognizing you have a problem, then fixing it. Try to make one trade a day, or actually even try try my one week challenge. I have this challenge for my students where you watch the market and you don't trade for an entire week. And it is the hardest thing to do. And you're like, ah, like it's so frustrating. Like a steak eater, like you can't eat steak. You have to be vegan for a week, which I think would be tougher. But uh, you know, try that. And again, with the, the one week challenge, it doesn't mean that you can't trade, but just have that mentality because once you have that mentality where you shouldn't be trading or you can't trade, you have more patience to wait for the best trades. Like I, I think I've probably had 10 people who have taken this challenge up. I just mention it every now and then. It's not like a formal challenge. But out of the 10 people, I think seven of them still traded, but all seven of them traded better just with the mentality that they didn't have to trade. And then three of them actually didn't trade because they're just, they're good. Yeah, yeah. But for somebody who's trading 10 or 20 times in a day, like oh, way too much, you're just gonna get frustrated because you're gonna have random results, you're trading random patterns, and that's not a way to becoming a millionaire. That's a way to becoming a typical degenerate trader who loses. Yeah. So change that, it's still early enough. This is a marathon, not a sprint. So I wanna see you back here in a year and see how you do. And it's not just about how much money you make, it's how much knowledge do you have, how much discipline do you have, how much preparation, how much experience do you have, right. and all of that added together will give you better odds on every trade. 
I love it. Makes I'll sense. tell you this, time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. And I will be one of your most successful students. Good. It's on camera. <laughs> Mark it down. Yeah, keep, keep my word on that. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Hey, Tim Sykes, millionaire, mentor, and trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I want to share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there. And also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge, and become my next millionaire student.